Welcome everybody to the Tech Runner build. So this is actually footage from a little bit in the past. This is back right before LS Fest. I tried to have this thing running and driving in about two days, but I had some health issues, so I wasn't able to do that. What I did was I called all my friends in. So we got Kyle, we got Adrian in the gray hoodie, and then you got Jason Fenske from Engineering Explained in the black hoodie. And we are looking at an LS1 out of a Corvette. So I was building this car from scraps from my old Corvette. We used that Corvette engine in the jump con, so I just bought another Corvette engine online, and that's what you see here. That flex plate normally goes into a giant torque tube, and I thought, you know what, we could probably reuse it on our transmission. So basically what we're doing is eliminating the torque tube in the middle and going engine straight to transmission, then to rear differential for a mid-engine setup, basically building a really, really cheap transaxle. So I cut that flex plate up, not really thinking about spacing or anything else like that, just figured it'll probably work. And then we slapped that baby onto the trans and lo and behold, it actually bolted up. So that's a 4L65E transmission. It's a four speed transmission built by RPM transmission. So it can hold some extra power attached to a Corvette automatic rear differential. You can't run these in a manual configuration because the shifter linkage would need to run right through the middle of your engine. So you have to run these in automatic if you wanna do this uh, budget transaxle type of setup. Now I say budget transaxle, well it is. It makes it for a very, very long platform. The distance between the back of your transmission and the front of your engine is extremely long. Hence the build style and, and the layout of this vehicle. And you can see we're pretty proud of our accomplishment, getting everything together. Got it dangling in the air there and we're saying, is it gonna fit in the frame rails? We give it a little dunk, it fits, and then back out it goes. Now, last time we were working on this build, the front end was a little bit high. So I contacted FDF Race Shop and they gave us a huge discount on an angle kit with a, that runs a, a drop knuckle. So it actually lowers the front of the car by an inch and provides you with crazy angle, which we really need on this build because it's so long, our turdian radius is terrible, but the added angle will help out. So Jason Fenske, normally a whiteboard guy, we got him with some wrenches and he did really, really good at assembling and installing the suspension, uh, but pretty bad at filming it. This is about as far as we got. And he jumped into the right side as well, but for some reason um, he turned the camera off before he installed the, the fun parts. That's okay, Jason. Time lapse isn't for everybody. Fast forward a couple months in the future and it's current time, end of September, and I need to get this engine out of the car. Basically what we did was we welded in a very temporary engine mount. We took this to LS Fest to show people this is what it looks like now. This is a work in progress and we're gonna build this thing out and we'll bring it to LS Fest next year, completely finished. So I'm pulling the engine out to check on a few things, which means the very, very tedious process of popping the trans off of the back of the engine to look inside there and see what did I do six months ago. So I look in there, lo and behold, torque converter does have fluid, actually came pre-installed. Flex plate is the right shape, the right size, and will work. So now it's just the hard work of bolting it back together. Now it's time to revisit the engine mounts. So the engine mounts can't be permanently welded into the car, but they needed to be supported by the top of the frame rail, the bottom of the frame rail, not be able to move left and right. So I had to come up with a design. Also, the engine has to drop out of the bottom of this car for maintenance. So I had to come up with a design where this beam could be completely removed from the frame. So I had to cut it all out, and then I cut some other pieces in the background to mount it back in there by bolting it in and holding it on the side of the frame rail. Jumping in the engine, I pulled some accessories off that we're not gonna use, and it's time for new exhaust. Got some Flowmaster stainless steel exhaust manifolds to do a four into one with a three inch V-band. Put a link in the description. Huge thanks to Flowmaster for hooking us up with these. Before we get too far into it, I wanna take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Metal Supermarkets, the convenience store for metal. Here at the shop, we use Metal Supermarkets all the time. Ever wonder where we got this rack of metal here, or the metal for this, or the metal for this? It's all Metal Supermarkets. It's an amazing resource to have. When you think you need metal, think about Metal Supermarkets. They got any metal you need, any size, cut and ready fast, and there is no minimum order quantity. So you don't have to buy 20 feet of something if you just need one foot. And their employees there and their customer service there are top notch. They are the best 
best in the business, unlike a lot of their competitors I will say that I've dealt with before. They're super knowledgeable, they're very friendly, and they'll help guide you through the process if you're new to it. And they can even help you source really hard to find metals. And their speed of service is really unmatched. And Metal Supermarkets has an amazing amount of metal on stock there with different types of metal, different shapes, and different grades. And with over 100 locations in North America alone, or you can buy online, it is a no-brainer. You wanna use Metal Supermarkets for all your metal needs. So hit the link in the description or it's on the screen here, Metal Supermarkets. Dot com. Find a store near you, or like I said, you can order online. Again, it's metalsupermarkets.com. Guys, when you think about metal and you need metal for a project, hit them up. So I wanted to make sure that I got these on outside of the car because it's gonna be a lot, lot easier to manage when I was outside of the car. And that's why I got the accessories off as well outside of the car. And now it's time to give the engine a little dunk, but I ran into a small problem of it just barely fits. Not enough room for vibration on the engine uh, to, to not be bouncing off of the frame rails. So I took a small sledge to the side of the uh, fat runner on the exhaust manifolds, gave it a little dent, made a little flat spot, and I had perfect clearance to be able to have just that, that vibration that the engine has when it sits on its rubber engine mounts. Next up, I'm mocking up the fuel cell. Our fuel cell's gotta go right about here because we have to have a firewall between the fuel cell and the driver. And you're gonna see Deechworks stuff all over the place. Deechworks completely spoils us with all of our fuel system needs. So we have a inline fuel pump, fuel filter, a million AN lines, all provided by Deechworks. So moving up to the fuel rails, I just picked up some random fuel rails online that go into the standard LS1 intake manifold. Trying to keep things simple, we've actually had these laying around the shop for quite a long time. They weren't used on a different build, and a lot of what I'm doing on this build is about reusing stuff that we just had laying around. So these were laying around, we thought we were going to run them on the Jumpicon, and it's just a standard fuel rail, but it takes AN lines so we can run my custom fuel system. Next off, there's a bunch of wiring on the engine that just came with the engine to go into the stock ECU. I had, a, had to get all this crap out of here so I could see what I was doing. And then it's back into mocking up the fuel system. So shout out to Deechworks, giving us a million AN lines for whatever projects we need. It's such a huge help and it means that we don't have to custom order everything we need. So it's, it's big and it allowed me to get this thing done in a reasonable amount of time. So shout out to Deechworks. Link is in the description for them. Hit them up for all your fuel system needs. Next, we're going with the throttle body. Throttle body was a big issue. This intake manifold takes a three bolt throttle body, which does not wire up with my ECU, so I had to custom wire that. But we got the three bolt one on there. Found a Corvette water pump laying around the shop, probably the one that we took off this engine a long time ago. Bolted that thing into there. And then using a ICT billet relocation bracket to relocate my alternator down low. So next up, I found this little frame sitting around the shop and I thought this thing would do really good to house the fuel cell. So after cutting it up in almost every single direction and then welding it together, it looks pretty good. But the metal had a level of rust on it, so I had to scrape all of that off. And by the time I was done, I thought, you know what, I should have just started with fresh metal on this one. But I got a fresh coat of paint on it, and it's good to go. So now we're looking at that wiring for my Holly ECU. I'm using a Holly Dominator on this build that was provided to me by Holly. So shout out to Holly for all the support on this. You're gonna see the Dominator running the car later on. This is a tunable uh, by laptop, self-tunable. You can use a wizard to tune auto correction tables, it's the best in the business for LS. So shout out to Holly, links in the description. Thank you so much for providing us a dominator for this build. And here you're seeing the torque converter bolted up to the flex plate, and then I'm throwing the starter in behind it. That's where you access it, is right behind the starter. And now we're on to exhaust. The exhaust on this car is 100% temporary. I need you, to, need you to hear this twice, 100% temporary. What I'm checking is the volume and the sound. I have two kind of strange shaped resonator slash mufflers and uh, I wanted to see if, if this thing is going to be annoyingly loud plus you have to put an O2 sensor in for the ECU to read and adjust fuel maps so I got an o everything's temporarily tacked up got the exhaust in there throwing the fuel cell back in there 
tack welding its frame in place and probably welding a little bit too closely to a fuel cell with gasoline in it. Moment of truth, it's fired up. I'm the king of the wires mess. All right guys, we found a blown fuse, which is a very rare thing to happen, but it happened. So uh, it should start now. That's so cool, man. This thing runs so good. I'm so excited that we got it to start. So it's a big step from there to get it running and then obviously get a whole body on it. And we've got a lot to do in not very long. This car has to leave for SEMA on October 27th. So this is our third vehicle going to be displayed at SEMA. This vehicle is in what's called a featured spot and it's a really, really cool spot. Right as you're into the entrance of SEMA, everybody will be walking by this vehicle. So it's a super, super cool location and I'm super amped about it. So we have the R69 going in the Koenig Wheels booth. Where's the R69? Right there, Koenig Wheels booth. We have the Mustang going in the Holly booth and we have this on the entryway into SEMA. So there's a lot to do. Um, you may have noticed that there's, I'm not doing a lot on the Mustang right now. I'm there for design, for critique, but then I'm fully in on this build. This is a build that I've, I've absolutely always wanted to build. I think it will be one of the craziest things that I ever build in my life. I've been saying that I wanted to do this build since I remember when we were cramming on the 240Z building it. I told somebody, I just wanna take like a month of time away and build like use a Corvette powertrain and, and build like an F1 car out of it. So now I get to do it. When I got my cancer diagnosis, everything really went up in the air and I set a lot, a lot of goals for SEMA and everything that I wanted to do. And I wanted to do exactly this, which was bring this vehicle and just go balls to the walls for a month and build this thing the way I wanna build it. So I'm super happy and I feel super fortunate that I get to do this. And it's really cool and I'm loving every minute of it. In the next episode, I'm gonna be doing a burnout in this thing. I'll see you then. Peace! Come on.